What is going on guys and welcome to CSS tutorial. In this video we're going to start covering the selectors in CSS and if you remember from the last video when we were learning the syntax the selector would be the first thing that we write when we are when we want to like let's say get the element. So h1 in this case is going to be the selector and what it means is that I'm selecting this h1 element over here. So if I would wanted to select h2 I would I would write h2. I mean pretty simple and if I would want to write the paragraph I would I would have to write a paragraph. Now Continuing with the syntax, if you remember from the last video, then we needed to create a uh, these curly brackets over here, and then we needed to write a property and a value. Now I just want to show you quickly how brackets actually makes our life a little bit easier. That if, for example, I would want to write a property, in this case it's going to be background property, just for the visual purposes, so it's easier to see what we're changing. So if I would just type B, right because i know that it uh, the background property would start with background right would start with b then the next thing the brackets right away shows me this code hint so all i would have to do is actually i can either find it over here i just can keep typing and i can see that this is the background color this is the property that i want so you have two options you can obviously write it yourself and remember the properties or you can just use these co code hints which actually make your life much much more easier now another thing that the right away as we actually press enter you can see that it, it the brackets finds the property that we chose and actually gives me the values that I would want. Now these are not all the colors but and in a couple of videos we're going to actually start covering colors. However this gives me the, the very nice set of colors that I would want to choose. So let's say that I'm just going to go with I don't know the blue violet right. So you can see that I don't need to remember the name of the color. I don't need to actually remember the property property name. All I, all I think that I can do is I can actually use the brackets and use the fact that it gives me these code hints right. So the last thing that I would need to do, I would put a semicolon here and I would close this property. Now in the last video, what we did is the typical way we actually minimized the brackets. We found the folder that we're working in, which is going to be the CSS. And we went over here, we found our file and then we just clicked on a file and the web browser opened up our file. And I'm just going to close these ones because it just opened too many, right? However, in the brackets, if you haven't been watching my HTML tutorial, in the brackets there's actually a very nice neat thing and that's actually called live preview and again there's two ways how we can get the live preview we can either do it through the file over here or we have this little icon and what happens is the live preview opens up the right away the file that we're working in google chrome and you can see that this is our result this is the violet that we created as a background color and let me just show you what i usually do that I just minimize this screen and for the Mac I just press it to one side over here and press it here and this one I get on the other side and then I just 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 do it like this so that I can see and why I'm doing this because right away the other thing that brackets live preview does that like the name suggests it's live preview so as I would be let's say changing something over here and if I would say, I don't know, I would say that I want this color to be green, yellow, right? So you can see that right away, it, 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 I have a green, yellow. So I can see live what I'm doing, what I'm changing, how it works. And it's actually very nice, especially for these tutorials that we don't need to save the file. Let, then let's, let's go and find the file. So therefore, I would suggest you using brackets but it, because it's a very, very neat feature. And another thing if, about the brackets, now that we have this preview, and if you don't want, let's say this column is messing up, like let's say you don't have enough space, you can always find in brackets, there's a couple of ways we can have this view. And you can see that this hide sidebar. So if just press this, you can see that sidebar is gone. Now we can use a shortcut, which would be command shift H. And you can see that I have it back. And I'm just going to get rid of it. This is just a little preview of what brackets can do if will if you're going to be following this tutorial and if you'll be using the brackets now let's go to the selectors so you can see that again the selectors will be the first thing that we write whenever we are actually picking the element because this is going to tell us what type of element which element are we choosing this is going to be selector so again if i would change over here to paragraph you can see how my uh, background color of the paragraph change now 
Now, there's a couple of uh, selectors that are universal. So the first universal selector would be actually if I have this star and you can see the whole, whole document basically is selected. And this is what it does. Whatever the, whenever we're using this, it affects the whole document, right? So again, if we would change the color over here, let's say I'm just going to say that I want the color to be red. You can see that the whole color for the whole document would be red. And also what I can do is I can actually select, you can see over here, these body tags. Remember when we were covering them, I can actually select the body tags as a selector. So if I write over here, you can see that again, it selects the whole body because what you can see is if you remember from HTML, we were actually nesting these elements. You can see that all these elements over here are nested within the body. And then the body is actually nested within a whole HTML wrapper, right? Over here. This is our whole file. So if I'm selecting the body over here, I affect the whole thing because all my elements are nested within a body element. Now, here's another thing. If let's say that we have uh, element, right? So we have element H1, but of course, if we want, we can select H2. And let's say that we want this background color and again, I'm sorry I'm using the background colors, but I just think that this is for now, once we haven't covered many of these properties, this is going to be the most visually, I don't know, uh, best one to, to show us what we're doing. You can see that right away I have this as aqua because I selected the H2, which is this one. And then moving down a line, let's say that I would want to select a paragraph. And again, I would do the same thing. I would just say background color. And let's say that I want it, well, not black. Let's say again, let's go back to blue violet. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to see this background link. Well, not link, background. Li I'm sorry, not background link, a link. So we go over here and we just select the link. And again, the background color. And I'm just going to say that this one I want yellow over here like this. So now you can see that I have selected all my four elements and I have changed the background color on them. Now let's say that I would want to have H1 and H2 to have the same uh, element, right? To, to have the same background, right? So let's say I'm just going to delete this for now. And what I can always do if I'm selecting multiple elements and I want them to appear the same, all I would have to do over here is I would write H1 that I would put a here a comma and I would select that h2 so i can write as many as i want i can write the paragraph over here and i can write the link or i can do however i want so you can know that if i'm selecting multiple elements then i can just write h1 and well not h1 i would need to write the first uh, element that i would want to select then i would just put over here a comma and I, I would just keep going. I would just write whatever elements, however I would want. If I would want to add 50 over here, I could add 50 over here. Now, another thing is if, let's say that I want this background color to be red over here, right? Uh, for both of them. But let's say for the actual uh, H1, I would want it to a little bit more stand out. So I'd want the color to be white. What I can always do is once I have selected this, this one property for the for both of the elements in this case, if I want specific other property to change in uh, in one of them, right? All I would have to do is again write H1 the same way. So you can see that this property right now is affecting actually both of them. But if I would want some specific, let's say, as a color, right? And it's funny that in the CSS, the color affects the, the you will see the font color. You know, the background color is red, but the font color actually, let's say that we we're going to switch it to what? Well, this one so you can see how it right away stands out right so you can see that first property background color selected for both of them however if i wanted to change just one color all i had to do is actually write over here the element name and actually select that property uh, this is going to be it for this video guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video <laughs>